you're an aspiring musician and you don't quite understand how to mix and master your tracks, well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take a mix from sounding like this to sounding like this. I'm gonna show you some of the concepts on how to get your drums to sound punchy. I'm gonna show you how to EQ out annoying frequencies. I'm gonna show you on how to add saturation. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to master your song so it sounds good and loud on any speaker. And the good thing is, if you have FL Studio, you can follow right along during this whole video. I'll only be using the free one shot and samples from FL Cloud. So if you like the way the song sounds, you can create the song right in FL Studio yourself. So if you wanna step up your mixing and mastering game, well, this video is just for you. So let's break down how we would approach mixing and mastering this track. So the first fundamental and one of the most important things to do is to work on your volume and also your panning to create space in your mix. So I'm going to let the song play. And as it plays, I'm going to slightly adjust the volume of each item in my mixer. And I'm also going to adjust the panning. So I don't want to pull the 808 and the kick too much because you want those to hit fairly close to center. The samples I pulled a little bit further wide, so about 20% left for the guitar. Uh, the 808 I only took about 5% and same thing with the kick. Generally you want your 808 and kick to be pretty much dead center or just slightly off, not too far off. You don't want your kick to be left or right. The other thing that I need to do is actually create a drum bus for all of my drum instruments. The way you do that is you double click on one and then drag across without letting go, select all of these. Then I'm gonna right click over here on insert 10 and say route to this track only. And then we'll name this drum bus. Then I'm gonna right click on it. For me personally, I like to dock it to the left. And you know what, let's make one for the melody too, just in case we need to create some space between the drums and the melody items. So same thing, double click, select them, right click, route to this track only, name this instrument bus and I'm going to dock it to the left as well. So now we have our instrument bus, our drum bus, 808 is going to the master and the vocal effects is going to the master. Next, I want to tune that guitar sample a little bit because I can hear some hissing in the actual sample. If I solo it, take a listen. Depending on what kind of speakers you're listening on, there's like a s that I can hear. So we're gonna do some surgical EQing. So you can use any surgical EQ. You can use the Fruity Parametric EQ. You can use Pro Q3, essentially anything that gives you a low pass, high pass. And I prefer it to be dynamic because we're gonna make some dynamic changes to the sample. All right, so I have Pro Q3 loaded up. So let's add a low pass or a high cut filter. And let's start to listen and see if, where that hissing occurs. There we go, that sounds a lot cleaner for me. I don't wanna cut out too much, so I'm not even going with an aggressive slope. I'm going 12 decibels per octave. If you do something like a brick wall or like a 48, I think it's gonna to cut too much of that information over there. So I think for me, a gradual slope is better. It still sounds clean, but it removes that hissing. And you know what, I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom end. So I won't bring that too high, maybe 70 cycles or 80 cycles, just to make a little bit of space for the 808, but I don't wanna cut out some of that fundamental information. See here, we have a little bit of mud. 
So again, when you're listening through, always listen on what are the problematic frequencies, try to remove those and then mix everything together. So I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to make it dynamic. So I'm going to leave it on zero. So by default, I'm not changing that frequency, but when that threshold is going to get hit, I'm going to duck it down maybe four decibels or so. I'm going to listen and I'm going to make it dynamically move. So you can see wherever that threshold is being hit, it starts to duck down those frequencies. So I'm not changing the overall EQ. That filter is only being applied when that frequency is hitting a certain threshold. I think that's it for now. I'm going to leave this as such and let's move on to our bell melody. So for the bell, I already hear some clicking that I don't like. And I think the clicking is right here. Because this is the actual melody, likely. Yeah, and the clicking is probably here. So I'm gonna use a wider filter for this and I'm gonna pull it down a bit and maybe make it dynamic. See, look, if I disable this. And then I'm gonna cut out some of that low end on this too. And maybe some of the high end. I generally don't notch out this much. The better solution is probably to use something like Soothe to take out the resonance. But again, this is just to give you a visual. Uh, you can dynamically use an EQ and then also notch out some of these annoying frequencies. Now what I want to do is add some saturation. So add some harmonics to that signal. So I just added Black Box HG2, which is again, one of my favorite saturators. There's plenty that I use, but this is a very nice one. the decay on that lingers a little bit long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a transient shaper and I highly advise you if you don't use transient shapers to use a transient shaper to either increase the attack or remove the sustain on any instrument. So let's add the Neutron transient shaper because that's a multi-band one if we wanna use it as such. See that it just shortens that tail a little bit and it makes it a little bit more punchy. And by the way, as you're making these EQ adjustments, the, it could impact the overall volume or the dynamics of that individual channel. So I always solo it, but then I mix it in context. So if I need to adjust it after, I'll always make adjustments. It's good. Now the kick, I'm going to do something a little bit separate. I want it to be audible on all speakers. So I'm going to add a little bit of saturation and then I'll probably will use a transient shaper as well, just to make it punchy if it needs it. So if it doesn't cut through, I'm going to increase the attack on that and maybe cut down a little bit of that uh, sustain. It's clipping here. I can see that it's going to 1.4 dB, but because it's going to a drum bus, I'm not too concerned because I'm gonna use a compressor within the drum bus to kind of glue everything together. All right, next let's look at the actual drum bus. So what I wanna do is compress it lightly. I don't wanna cut out the transients too much. I just want everything to sort of be glued and squeezed together without killing the dynamics because that's one of the problems that a lot of producers make. They over compress their signal, so it kills your dynamics. So in the drum bus, let's select a compressor. I'm using the 1176 by UAD. The 1176 works a little bit differently, so I want a slow attack. So you bring that to one. If you bring it to seven, it's a quick attack and a fast release. So I just wanna just kind of round off a little bit of those transients without doing too much. And then I'm just gonna dial it in. So you can see here when it kicks, it takes about five decibels out, but it doesn't do it right away and the release is fairly quick. And my ratio is four to one. Basically the ratio says for every four decibels that, that go through that, only allow one decibel to come out. You can go for every eight decibels that go through if you want to really squash it, 12 or 20. Uh, I'm not going to those high ratios. I just want to kind of squeeze everything just gently together on this one. And then if we need to compress it again, we can do that with an additional compressor. Uh, next, let's add some fine tuning EQ on the actual drum bus. And this hi-hat, let's add a high shelf, and make it a bit dynamic when the hi-hat comes through and I'll make it a little bit less slow. So 
So I can see that I'm coming out four decibels above zero, which is fine because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this through uh, ozone maximizer and it's gonna make the drums a little bit more punchy without actually going above a certain threshold. So typically I set my drums to maybe negative four decibels or so, we'll see. So let's set the limit to minus four and I'm not gonna use true peak. I, I tend to use that at the end, my final limiter on the master, but I'm not gonna use it on the actual mix bus. And you can do low, mid, high in regards to soft clipping, but then if you do high, it's just gonna distort everything. You can hear that kick, it's pretty distorted. So I like to use low at a decent amount, but not too much. So side note, if you find that your kick is being squashed too much in the drum bus, uh, what you can do is route it from here in parallel straight to the master. So if you do that, you just click here. So now it's going to the drum bus and the master, and then you can gradually add that dry signal as well as the compressed one in. So if you wanna make it a bit more punchy. All right, now let's make sure that that 808 can hit on every system. So again, the best way to do that is by adding some harmonics. There's different tools you can use. I like Waves, BB Tubes, Black Box HG1. There's a bunch of other ones. FL Studio has the low end lifter that you can use as well, but I will use my trusty Black Box. Lastly, what I want to do is sidechain the kick to that 808. So every time the kick hits, it ducks down the 808. Okay, so let's sidechain to this track. And I've added the Pro Q3 on the 808. And what we need to do is bring in that sidechain. And then let's add a shelf around 150. And then make this dynamic. Through the sidechain, you have to click this little thing here. Sidechain. So whenever the kick will hit, we'll duck down, I don't know, maybe three decibels. All right, so on the instrument bus, let's add a little bit of saturation to the entire signal. So this is both the bells and the guitar. For this one, I'm gonna use the Louder Than Liftoff Silver Bullet. And they have some good presets. Let's see if we can go through some. That's nice. This is like a high pass, so you can do it from 25 or 50 cycles, and then let's add some tone to it. All right, so with that being said, let's now mix everything on our master channel and compare the before and after. So a few things that I want on my master, I want some saturation for sure. I want to control the dynamics. I don't want to squeeze it too much, but at the same time, I want to push into a limiter, maybe do a little bit of compression. Uh, so first thing, let's add ozone. So the first module that I've added is a multiband compressor and I have it split around 1, 10, 1K, 5.8K. So it's four bands, zero to 100 is being compressed at 12.8. So once that threshold is hit, it's gonna start compressing. I'm giving it two decibels of gain. Mid, I'm giving one decibel of gain, that's from 100 to 1K. And then the other ones are just being compressed a little bit lighter. Uh, the ratios are 1.4, 1.5, 1.5, and 1.2. So these ones on the mids are compressing at a little bit higher ratio. Again, remember once the threshold is hit, every 1.4 decibel here that goes above it, only one will come out. Uh, and then I also have a hard limiter that uses the ratio 10 to one. So you can hear, see here a little bit is being rolled off. And I'm also running these in parallel. So when you run in parallel, it mixes the compressed signal with the dry signal. Okay, next let's add a maximizer. For this one, I'm gonna set it to negative one. And same thing, I'm gonna use a modern. Let's push into it. too much color too early because this is my first limiter that I'm pushing into. I'm also going to add the God particle. So I added the God particle and let's disengage the limiter because I don't want to do any limiting on this. So I don't, it's not going to push into it or anything because it's disengaged. 
And then let's also roll off about one decibel on the input and output because we are gonna introduce a few extra decibels just from the changes we're gonna make. Good. Lastly, let's add the final limiter, which I'll use the Sonable Smart Limit for that. I typically reset these. I know it tries to give you recommendations, but I like to dial things in myself and that attack is way too quick. So we'll start with the original and I'm going to gain match it as it plays along. And then I'm going to toggle between the two of them so we can hear the difference it makes. And then I'll take the gain matching off so we can hear what it sounds like as it's being pushed into that limiter. All right. So we're going to start out with the unmastered one and then we're going to toggle it to the mastered one. So if I reset it and toggle it back and forth, you're going to notice even more because it's louder. The mix is going to be louder because we pushed it into that limiter. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope that you learned something new. If you like this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe. And I hope this video inspired you to go and make some music. Peace.